live from our seven Tasmania studios. Your nightly news with Kim Miller begins now. Good evening and thanks for joining us. First tonight, Jeremy Rockcliffe has declared he will nominate himself as Tasmania's next Premier in the wake of Peter Gutwin's resignation. His rumoured rival Michael Ferguson has remained tight-lipped about his political ambitions. With a new bounce in his step, Jeremy Rockcliffe confirmed he will be contesting the Liberal Party leadership. And of course, I'm absolutely um, keen to put my hat in the ring and look forward to that, but my colleagues, that's up to my colleagues. So. The Deputy Premier, buoyant at the prospect of becoming Tasmania's 47th Premier. I'm, you know, talking with my colleagues, I'm very enthusiastic and um, Tasmania's got enormous opportunities ahead of it. Walking out of the same event separately, Michael Ferguson kept his cards close. Amid speculation, he will also nominate for the top job. We're a very strong and united and enthusiastic team, a lot of experience and, and uh, we actually like each other, so we're working together. The member for Bass has made his leadership ambitions clear in the past, pulling out of the race against Peter Gutwin in 2020 when he didn't have the numbers. And analysts say he could prove unlucky a second time around. The problem for Ferguson is the, the electoral popularity aspect that you have, have Jeremy Rockcliffe who is hugely popular and Michael Ferguson who uh, was third Liberal in some way back in, in his um, electorate. Presenting a united front after a leadership battle of her own last year, Rebecca White says the cracks are starting to show within the government, also questioning if Minister Rockcliffe is up to the task. And if Jeremy Rockcliffe becomes the Premier, there are serious questions about whether he's got the stamina to stick it out. There have been open rumours circulating about whether or not he will even remain in Parliament for the rest of this year, let alone take the Liberal Party to the next election. The Attorney General has now thrown her hat in the ring, confirming her intention to run for Deputy Premier. In a statement, Elise Archer says the state government needs a strong leadership team with both gender and geographical balance, not only for the long-term future of the party, but to continue working on behalf of all Tasmanians. Parliament has been delayed until May 3 to allow a recount in Bass as the state government focuses on keeping its one-seat majority. Ainsley Kosh, 7 Tasmania News. $21 million of regional grants made by the Liberal Party during the 2018 state election have been questioned by the Integrity Commission. The report states it wasn't clear how decisions were made and says they lacked fairness, openness and value. I think this latest report reveals that they don't want to be held to account. This is a government that does act without integrity and this latest report from the Integrity Commission exposes the way that they've used taxpayer money. The Commission recommends the introduction of legislation to ensure ministers manage grants appropriately, including ones made during an election campaign. Teachers are calling for a COVID circuit breaker, asking for the Easter break to be extended to help slow the spread. The move isn't being considered, despite rising case numbers across the state. With 2,400 more cases added, the nation's smallest state today ticked off an enormous COVID milestone. 100,000 cases since December 15. That's nearly one in five Tasmanians. Another man in his 70s died at the Northwest Regional Hospital and 19 people are being treated for the virus in hospital. Now the teachers' union is calling for action to slow the spread. With Easter, there's a good opportunity to take an extra two or three days off to really try and make sure we can get things sorted for the upcoming term. Saying a circuit breaker is needed. I think we need to investigate how serious does this need to get before we do need to go down the path of online learning. I like to have them return to normality with school. Um, I think we've just got to keep getting back out there. Me and my husband are both working um, non-stop. We'll get a couple of days off over Easter, but that'll be it. And some parents are still carrying the scars of remote learning. I have those two, so trying to do the other two school as well as these two, it was just a nightmare. Yeah. Public health says schools are the best place for students to be, while the Education Minister Roger Yench is confident his COVID plan is keeping kids safe. He released an update on Monday which came with no major changes, 
despite more than 70 school-wide outbreaks taking place. We would hate to see children's learning disrupted further. What's quite obvious though is the government hasn't planned for how to deal with COVID outbreaks in our schools. Josh Duggan, 7 Tasmania News. A 53-year-old woman charged with murder following the stabbing death of a 55-year-old man in Hobart last month has pleaded not guilty. Annette Eloise Hancock appeared in the Hobart Magistrates Court and will reappear in June. Meanwhile, a Risdon prison inmate has denied he allegedly escaped the Royal Hobart Hospital while in police custody. 26-year-old Dale Howlett has pleaded not guilty in the Hobart Magistrates Court to a string of charges, including escape. He was remanded in custody and will reappear later this month. The passengers on a regional express flight from Melbourne to King Island have escaped serious injury after an emergency evacuation before takeoff. Those on board jumped down more than a metre after flames were reportedly seen coming from the aircraft. A scare for passengers bound for King Island, forced to leap from the plane and onto the tarmac after staff saw flames coming from the left-hand engine yesterday afternoon. They had airport staff there to catch us because I said, no way, I can jump down there. And uh, he said, just jump, jump to me and they just caught us. Unfortunately, the first man rushed a bit and hurt, jumped and hurt his knee. On my list of fun things to do, smoke coming out of a plane sits right up there uh, with uh, sitting in a bathtub full of scissors. So it's sort of not something that you uh, <laughs> expect to see every day. More than 40 passengers were on board the flight from Melbourne. Thankfully, no one was seriously injured and passengers were taken to the Rex Lounge after the incident. We had a chaplain came around and asked us whether we were OK. Um, and we amused ourselves quite well. We had a, uh, a massage. <laughs> on the massage chair. Emergency services were called to the scene and found no evidence of a fire, but an investigation is underway. All passengers were flown to King Island on a later flight. Elizabeth O'Neill, 7 Tasmania News. A motorcyclist has been seriously injured in a crash with a truck on the Bass Highway at Howth this afternoon. The collision occurred around 300 metres east of the Creamery Road overpass. The rider is in hospital in a non-critical condition. And Jack Jumpers fans will need to rethink how they're going to get to this Friday's game at Bell Reeve after Metro Tasmania cancelled the Jack Jumpers Express bus. It follows more than a week of bus cancellations as a result of COVID, other illnesses and a shortage of drivers. More than 100 services were cancelled today. The state government has not confirmed if the free bus trial will be extended beyond the end of this month. Meanwhile, Tasmanian commuters are set to benefit from more efficient travel on the state's most extensive bus network. Tassie Link Transit has partnered with technology experts in EC Australia to make use of an app where passengers can easily check real-time service updates. We partnered with uh, an app, app provider called Next there and they've integrated our real-time feed out of the, the system that we've implemented at Tassie Link to be able to provide that to, um, to the public. This is a big change for our passengers. Modern technology now is going to be used to provide a reliable, up-to-date information for people in the regional and remote areas of Tasmania. It's the first of its kind in the state to be fully automated, hoping to encourage more people to make use of public transport. 13 lives have already been lost on Tasmanian roads in what's been a horror start to the year. We've taken an inside look into police operations with the community urge to play its part in driving down the toll. Ready to respond at any moment. There's no typical timeline on the beat. When suiting up in blue, the day can quickly become chaos. One minute we're sitting at the station having the coffee, next minute we're dealing with a multiple, you know, multiple vehicle crash. Targeting speedsters and drivers under the influence, all to avoid a mistake that could potentially take a life. The research shows that if you see a police officer, your driving behaviour changes for a period of time. Inside the vehicle, police are equipped with technology to keep an eye on anyone doing the wrong thing. I just need a long, steady breath till I tell you to stop, please, sir. Nice. That will do nicely, thank you. We're focusing on the fatal five. That's speeding, seatbelts, distraction, inattention and drugs and alcohol. Recording triple the amount of deaths on the road as the same time last year. The behaviour this morning in Tasmania showed positive signs. Zero, zero. Thanks very much. See you later.
the community share the roads with everybody else. Uh, it's not just our role to do that. Everybody plays a part. Among the ranks is a motorbike fleet which is helping crack down on dangerous driving. They are achieving great results for us because people don't know where we're going to be at any particular time. A 71-year-old woman is the latest person to die on Tasmanian roads following a horror. Head-on crash in Olverston earlier this week. Those tasked with delivering the news to loved ones say it's one of the hardest jobs a police officer has. Our knowledge that what we're telling these people will have a long, significant, lasting effect on the rest of their lives. Grace Evans, 7 Tasmanian News. There were grins and feelings of elation with our newest Australians accepting their citizenship certificates. 70 people attended the Launceston ceremony, with many choosing to make Tasmania their home after falling in love with the lifestyle here. People over here like are really helpful, kind enough, like, you know, they stop and ask you if you're all right or not. The big difference maybe is a uh, woman's uh, safety, maybe, uh, because uh, here is a uh, women says freely go anywhere they want. In Pakistan, a little bit, little bit we can't do. In Australia, we do. Conferees came from a number of countries, including Myanmar, Iran, Pakistan, Nigeria, Italy and Uganda. Tasmanians can grind and ollie their way to glory in a skateboarding competition with a locally made prize on offer. Rave on wheels will pit the best on four wheels against one another with two skateboards among the pool of prizes. Alastair Morgan is a brain behind the boards. His eye-catching product is now exported as far as Europe. I've given away a lot of boards to the kids here at Ravenswood, but I also would like to see a community impact in the sense of them starting to realise that chasing your dreams is something that is achievable if you know what you're passionate about. Alastair will be among those skating in the competition in Ravenswood on Friday, April 29. Tasmania's girls' side has beaten New South Wales 3-0 in the opening game of the National Under-18 Hockey Championship. Earlier on, Tasmania's boys thumped the Northern Territory. Max Johnston starred with four goals as Tassie piled on the winners to reach 7-0 by the final whistle. Meanwhile, Will Magnay's season for the Jack Jumpers is officially over. Medics have ruled out the centre for good as he grapples with a knee injury, which has dogged him for weeks. Magnay managed 11 games for the Jack Jumpers after also missing the start of the season with an injured foot. And Tasmanian import Josh Adams was showing his compassion off the court today for fairy friends in need of a new home. The Greyhound Adoption Program will be the game day partner this Friday night when the Jack Jumpers face off against the Taipans under lights at My State Bank Arena. They do have a bit of a quirky personality. Uh, they're lovable, they'll lean up against you. Um, you know, they, they're a short haired dog, so they don't shed. Uh, there's just so many really good characteristics about the Greyhound, so why wouldn't you? All our houses are filled with dogs. I got three at mine, uh, my mom's got three at hers, my sister's got two out uh, in Texas, so it's pretty much been that way since I can remember. A number of dogs will gather on the concourse to help attract new foster carers and tip off for the game against Cairns is at 7.30. Good evening, 21 was the state's top at Launceston today, Hobart 18, 19 in Burnie and a top of 18 in Devonport, Grove 19, 17 at Friendly Beaches, Mariah Island 15 and 14 in Laowini. The satellite pictures show cloud across the east of Tasmania as well as the southeast region and over the Bass Strait Islands, relatively cloud free elsewhere. A level of cloud band is extending over central New South Wales into eastern Victoria and grazing Flinders Island, while Tasmania's west and east coast is covered by low-level cloud, as is much of the eastern parts of the mainland and the coast of South Australia and WA. Tomorrow's chart shows a ridge of high pressure continuing over Tasmania, with several lows and troughs over the mainland. Easterly winds of 10 to 20 knots about the north and westerly winds about the south, more variable to 10 knots about the east and west. South to southwesterly swells of 2 to 2.5 metres in the west and the south. Partly cloudy in Hobart tomorrow, Signet 21, the top of 22 in New Norfolk. Mostly sunny in Launceston, Devonport 19, partly cloudy in Campbelltown. Burnie, sunny, Straw 19 and a top of 21 in Smithton. Mostly sunny in St Helens, Swansea partly cloudy and 18 degrees in Fingal. 
Turning to the three day forecast now, fine conditions across much of the state on Friday with mostly light winds and afternoon coastal sea breezes about the west and the south. Saturday, showers about the north, fine elsewhere, 23 in Launceston and 24 in Hobart. And showers extending from the west during the morning on Sunday, then clearing from the west during the evening, 21 in Burnie and 23 in Swansea. A possible shower in Brisbane tomorrow, Sydney 22 degrees, partly cloudy in Melbourne, a top of 33 degrees in Alice Springs and sunny in Broome. And right now in Hobart it's 13 and clear, also clear in Launceston 14 and mostly clear and 14 in Devonport. And Kim, we've got a new employee at the station. We do, we do, Victoria. So before we leave you tonight, Seven Tasmania has a new face around the office. Walter is an eight-week-old Sheltie who has recently joined the Miller household. Despite being just eight weeks old, Walter spent his first day in the office today sniffing out the best stories and becoming a news hound. He's not quite up to being a news presenter just yet. He still needs to work on his language skills. And I have to clean the carpet of the boss's office. And that is all the news for this evening. As always, thanks for being with us. For now, good night.